There are different conferences for neuroblastoma. There are not that many of them. There, I wish there were more. But this was one uh, where there were basically anybody who had done work on neuroblastoma sort of submits an abstract. I was able to read all the abstracts. There were 650 of them, I believe. And, uh, you know, I made a list of ones that seemed like the most interesting. One of the ones that jumped off the page was this one about nifurtimox. And it was literally a two-paragraph abstract submitted by Dr. Scholler and other doctors uh, who worked with her. What was most interesting to me was uh, the story of the one child that had uh, was basically resistant to neuroblastoma therapy but, and had gotten a bad blood transfusion and therefore contracted Chagas disease purely by a tragic accident. And so in treating the Chagas disease with nifurtimox, while also doing these therapies that were at the time really weren't doing anything for the child, suddenly the child over a, a very short period of time went into remission. To show you the state of affairs in neuroblastoma, <clears throat> there was nothing else out there more exciting than that story to me. I immediately set up a, uh, a conference call uh, with two other dads who had sick kids and, uh, and Dr. Schola, who I had never met before. When Neil and John called for the first time, um, it was a year ago, August, and they um, had were two parents that obviously had done quite a bit of research in neuroblastoma. They knew all the trials that were available out there. Um, John's daughter Penelope had been on most of them and had really no options left. And then the neuroblastoma oncology, the doctors sort of said, hey, wait a second, what are you guys doing? You can't just keep giving kids compassionate use. You need to start a clinical trial. And so Dr. Scholler said to the main organization there, okay, can you help me start a clinical trial? And they said, sure, but first you're going to have to do uh, uh, much more preclinical work. It'll probably, and they don't say this, but it probably would have taken 18 to 24 months before a clinical trial would have started. The FDA and Bayer all coming together, we were able to open our phase one trial and with the help of John London. Vivian's doctor, Dr. Alter, showed me the article in the journal about the nifurtimox and the incident that had occurred with the little girl that had, or a patient uh, that had gotten Chagas disease and taken the nifurtimox and had Which a remission. Is a so uh, he said, maybe we should do this if Vivian ever relapses. So three months later, when she relapsed, he was on the phone with Dr. Scholler. So we knew ahead of time, we had in our minds that that was something interesting, that it was something kind of thinking out of the box. I think this is the most exciting thing that's happening in children's cancer research right now, and it's, it's, it's fantastic. And um, I'm just so grateful that Vivian was able to be a part of this, this trial. We're just so thankful for th that there's still people out there that don't throw the towel in on a second relapse. There's very limited funding available for neuroblastoma. We've done wonderful in our leukemia curates and our leukemia research because a lot of our children are diagnosed with leukemia and now we're, we're curing kids with leukemia. 80-90% of our children are survival and it's wonderful. Um, but the children that we're still seeing that are dying are the children with neuroblastoma. And because it's such a rare tumor, there's very little funding available for this disease. Um, but these are the kids that need our help now.